before I was sued for libel and before um, I'd written about alternative medicine, I planned to write a completely different book. I started uh, thinking about a book about The Simpsons and mathematics. Uh, turns out that a lot of the writers on The Simpsons are mathematicians and they smuggle lots of mathematics into the show. Um, and I spotted this about 10 or 11 years ago. Um, and I started talking to my editor and saying, look, this is a fantastic story, it's a great book, you know, we should go ahead and publish it. Um, and then I came across claims made by homeopaths uh, that they could treat malaria. And I thought, this is just ridiculous and dangerous and we did an investigation and, and the amount of, of quackery and dangerous quackery was so obvious that um, I thought, now is the time to write a book about alternative medicine. So I teamed up with Professor Edzard Ernst and we wrote Trickle Treatment. Um, and so the Simpsons book got put on hold. Um, and I was just about to start writing the Simpsons book again and I got sued for libel. Um, and that was another two years. Um, and I was just about to start writing the Simpsons book again and we started this campaign for libel reform. Um, but eventually I, I got back to the book and, um, and, and, and that's part of the reason I'm here in Australia. Um, is to talk about the book and to explain to people why um, you know why these mathematicians have ended up being co comedy writers why they love mathematics and and why they actually put it into the TV show um, when, when people hear that there's mathematics in The Simpsons one that they're, they're shocked and surprised um, but but there really is there's a ton of maths in, in, there's, there's a, in the very very first episode of The Simpsons Bart the genius there is a, a, go, a, a joke that revolves around calculus um, in another episode, we see uh, Pythagoras' th theorem uh, uh, pop in. Pi makes numerous appearances. Uh, the most beautiful equation in all of mathematics, Euler's identity, crops up in one and two episodes. Um, Fermat's last theorem, the most notorious problem in the history of mathematics, crops up in two different episodes. Um, the P versus NP problem, a great unsolved problem in mathematics, crops up in, 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 uh, in one episode, uh, Treehouse of Horror 6. In Marge and Homer Turner Couple Play, there is a narcissistic number, there's a perfect number, there's a Mersenne Prime. Um, the list goes on and on. There is so much mathematics in The Simpsons that you could write a book about it, and I have. Um, but the book also has four chapters on Futurama because a lot of the mathematicians who write for The Simpsons also write for Futurama. And so a lot of the mathematics that you might find in The Simpsons also appears in Futurama. Um, again, uh, gosh, things like P versus NP, things like Merbius strips, things like fractals. Um, you know, it, again, the, the amount of mathematics is extraordinary. And for me, you know, I've got my skeptical hat on where I criticize bad science, but with my science communicator hat on, um, combining the mathematics uh, with The Simpsons is an extraordinary way to, to celebrate mathematics and to um, even take on quite challenging ideas. In, in the, the, the movie theatre in Futurama is called the Aleph Null. And Aleph Null yeah. is a, a term used by mathematicians for infinity. And it implies that there are different scales of infinity because there are different scales of infinity. So you can take on quite challenging topics but you've got the Planet Express crew kind of taking you through this mathematics. So it's quite an engaging and hopefully accessible way even for non-geeks and non-nerds to, to get interested in mathematics.